The wraparound is 1 minute 48 seconds in length, with actualities alone following the story. 3, 2, 1. Television game shows may take you to play while at your home, but when you're actually on the set, it's harder than it looks, says Dr. Deborah Reinhardt. Reinhardt, an assistant professor of music education at Ball State, recently returned from Los Angeles, where she appeared as a competitor on Jeopardy. In called a category in the amount, and Alex Quebec reached the answer, and for me, he was the second to be finished was reading the answer. There's this big neon light around the board that comes on, and you cannot ring in until that light comes on, or else you're locked out. So there's lots to concentrate on when you're there when you play. According to Reinhardt, there is an extensive selection process, including a written test, a series of mock games, and a personal interview. There's stuff to have enough knowledge to play the game, and then to be able to play the game well, and then to be, as they say, likable. They want people to, to root for you when you're on television. Even after the selection process, you're not guaranteed a spot on the show, but will have to put on a list of potential contestants. Reinhardt was not called to compete until over a year after her initial selection. While some contestants take the game very seriously, Reinhardt said she just had fun with it and that she wasn't really too nervous. A little more nervous, but more than anything, you kind of forget that you're on TV. But then, um, you know, I've, I've given a few piano recitals and I found that similar thing happening. If I'm, if I'm really uh, engrossed in, in my performance uh, on the piano, I, I do forget about the audience, not completely, but, uh, you know, for, from time to time, sure. The episode of Jeopardy! that Reinhardt appears in will air Monday, October 22nd. Reporting from Muncie, I'm Tracy Ball. Coming up at the Actualities Alone, the first is 20 seconds in length with the out cue, When You're Playing. Coming across in 3, 2, 1. You call the category and the amount, and Alex Trebek reads the answer, and the minute he the second he finished was reading the answer, there's this big neon light around the board. It comes on, and you cannot ring in until that light comes on, or else you're locked out. So there's lots to concentrate on when you're there when you're playing. The second cut is 11 seconds in length with the out cue when you're on television. Coming across in three, two, one. First off, to have enough knowledge to play the game, and then to be able to play the game well, and then to be, as they say, likable. They want people to, to root for you when you're on television. The final cut is 23 seconds in length with the out cue, sure. Coming across in three, two, one. A little more nervous, but more than anything, you kind of forget that you're on TV. But then, um, you know, I've, I've given a few piano recitals and I found that similar thing happening. If I'm, if I'm really uh, engrossed in, in my performance uh, on the piano, I, I do forget about the audience, not completely, but, uh, you know, for, from time to time, sure. That wraps up today's story. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Today's story features Indy 500 veteran Tony Bettenhausen. The wraparound is 1 minute 23 seconds in length, with actualities alone following the story. Coming across in 3, 2, 1. Veteran auto racer Tony Bettenhausen has turned teacher. Bettenhausen recently took part in filming a series of physics lessons known as Physics at the 500. The program uses Indy 500 cars to demonstrate properties of physics, such as friction and the Doppler effect, in a fun and exciting way. The program originated at Ball State University, where three professors are working to spark student interest in science. If it's great for uh, kids and it's great for the sport of auto racing, I'm all for it. So, uh, you know, maybe this is a fun way that we can uh, get them interested at a young age in physics. Though physics is an important part of any auto race, according to Bettenhausen, it takes a unique group of people to form a successful racing team. The sport is, uh, has become very, very uh, specialized and it takes a lot of uh, uh, different types of individuals in the sport to make a racing operation a success, uh, whether it be an engineer, or aerodynamicist, or uh, just a mechanic uh, turning the wrenches. Uh, they're all very important. When Bettenhausen finishes the five-part video series, he will return to the track for more practice. We have high hopes for 1991, and uh, you know we can't wait for it to get here. The program will become a permanent display at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, and will also be available to schools. Reporting from Muncie, I'm Tracy Ball. Coming up at the Actualities Alone, the first is nine seconds in length with the out cue in physics. 
coming across in three, two, one. It's great for uh, kids and it's great for the sport of auto racing. I'm all for it. So, uh, you know, maybe this is a fun way that we can uh, get them interested at a young age in physics. The second cut is 19 seconds in length, but the LQ all very important. Coming across in three, two, one. The sport is, uh, has become very, very uh, specialized, and it takes a lot of uh, uh, different types of individuals in the sport to make a racing operation a success, uh, whether it be an engineer, or aerodynamicist, or uh, just a mechanic uh, turning the wrenches. Uh, they're all very important. The final cut is four seconds in length with the out cue to get here. Coming across in three, two, one. We have high hopes for 1991, and, uh, you know, we can't wait for it to get here. That wraps up today's story. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Today's story features Kip Shogger, Assistant Professor of Theater at Ball State. He's discussing Halloween decorations. The wraparound is 1 minute 30 seconds in length, with actualities alone following the story. Three, two, one. If you're planning to decorate your home for Halloween, you needn't spend a lot of money on commercial products, according to Kip Shogger, assistant professor of theater at Ball State. Shogger says many household items can be used to create an eerie effect. We can go out and buy some uncut cotton uh, for about a dollar a bag uh, at one of the stores, hobby craft store, and you can create little cobwebs. Very neat, very easy to clean up. You can use flour to create dust make something look very dusty, yet it vacuums up very easily as long as it doesn't get wet. Shogger says people fear the darkness and the unknown, and for that reason, the absence of light is very effective. And so that's why we say to subdue light and bring things down so that you can play upon their imagination or upon their fear. Shogger warns of the dangers involved when using total darkness, however. For safety reasons, he suggests dimming the light or using colored bulbs. Another safety precaution Shogger suggests is fireproofing, especially if you plan to use straw and or an open flame. We always suggest that someone treat the straw first and spray it with a, a solution of uh, ammonium sulfonate, uh, which you can buy commercially. Mix that two pounds of ammonium sulfonate with one gallon of warm water, spray it, and once it's dry, uh, it'll give it a protective coating. We'll make it completely fireproof, but it certainly will flame retardant. Reporting from Muncie, I'm Tracy Ball. Coming up at the actualities alone, the first is 18 seconds in length, with the out cue doesn't get wet. Coming across in three, two, one. We can go out and buy some uncut cotton uh, for about a dollar a bag uh, at one of the stores, hobby craft store, and you can create little cobwebs. Very neat, very easy to clean up. You can use flour to create dust, make something look very dusty, yet it vacuums up very easily as long as it doesn't get wet. The second cut is eight seconds in length with the out cue upon their fear. Coming across in three, two, one. So that's why we say to subdue light and bring things down so that you can play upon their imagination or upon their fear. The final cut is 22 seconds in length with the out cue flame retardant. Coming across in three, two, one. We always suggest that someone treat the straw first and spray it with a, a solution of uh, ammonium sulfonate, uh, which you can buy commercially, mix that two pounds of ammonium sulfonate with one gallon of warm water, spray it, and once it's dry, uh, it'll give it a protective coating. We'll make it completely fireproof, but it certainly will flame retardant. That wraps up today's story. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Today's story features former New York Congressman Joseph Diaguardi. He's commenting on the new budget plan. The wraparound is 1 minute 18 seconds in length, with actualities alone following the story. Coming up in 3, 2, It's not what you spend, it's how you spend it. And according to former Congressman Joseph Diaguardi, a Republican from New York, the United States government leaves too much off the books. Go back to what they call zero-based budgeting have each agency justify its needs for its programs from the bottom up. Diaguardi, the only certified public accountant ever elected to Congress, visited Ball State Monday. He expressed his dissatisfaction with the recently approved budget. I can't believe that President Bush allowed for any tax increases 
without controlling spending. Because we have seen in history, every time you raise taxes a dollar, guess what goes up a dollar fifty? Spending. So they never pay down the deficit with the taxes. It just somehow creates new programs. To help repair the financial state of our union, Diaguardi proposes not only practicing a capital budget, but also creating a position of chief financial officer who would report directly to the president. It's got to be an independent person in the executive office of the president with a 10-year term so that he can't be fired by the next administration. Diaguardi is working through his organization, Truth in Government, to educate the American people about congressional spending. Reporting from Muncie, I'm Tracy Ball. Coming up at the Actualities Alone, the first is eight seconds in length with the outcue bottom up. Coming across in three, two, one. Go back to what they call zero-based budget. Have each agency justify its need for its programs from the bottom up. The second cut is 16 seconds in length with the outcue new program. Coming across in three, two, one. I can't believe that President Bush allowed for any tax increases without controlling spending. Because we have seen in history, every time you raise taxes a dollar, guess what goes up a dollar fifty? Spending. So they never pay down the deficit with the taxes. It just somehow creates new programs. The final cut is also eight seconds in length with the OutQ next administration. Coming across in three, two, one. It's got to be an independent person in the executive office of the president with a 10-year term so that he can't be fired by the next administration. That wraps up today's story. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline. Today's story features Dr. Fred Soupy, professor of history at Ball State, discussing the history of Halloween. The wraparound is 1 minute 30 seconds in length, with actualities alone following the story. Coming across in 3, 2, dressing up in costumes, bobbing for apples, and pleading for candy. For many people, Halloween is a fun, mischievous time of year. However, it originated as a pre-Christian religious belief, says Dr. Fred Soupy, professor of history at Ball State. According to Soupy, the Celtic people of Western Europe felt the world was full of dark, evil spirits that came out during the winter months. Well, Halloween is their New Year's. It's the beginning of the dark, threatening half of the year, so they believe there were dark spirits all over the place. Trick-or-treating originated at this time as a form of appeasing the evil gods. Trick-or-treat is be nice to the spirits, give them some goodies, some hospitality, so they won't bother you, and also put bright fire in your window. That's what a jack-o'-lantern is all about, to repel the dark spirits. Following the rise of Christianity, the Celtic belief in pagan spirits was discouraged. Thus, Halloween took on a new meaning. So the name Halloween means the evening before All Hallows Day or All Saints Day. And the Christian church said, okay, Celtic people, you're becoming Christian. You have this belief that there are all sorts of spirits out on this evening. Tell you what, we will make November the 1st a day for all saints when you can pray to or think about any saints you choose. And it's saying, these are Christian good spirits now uh, instead of all kinds of evil uh, pagan ones. Uh, and that's where the name comes from. Reporting from Muncie, I'm Tracy Ball. Coming up at the Actualities Alone, the first is eight seconds in length with the out cue all over the place. Coming across in three, two, one. Well, Halloween is their New Year's. It's the beginning of the dark, threatening half of the year, so they believe there were dark spirits all over the place. The second cut is 13 seconds in length with the out cue repel dark spirits. Coming across, in three, two, one. Trick or treat is be nice to the spirits, give them some goodies, some hospitality so they won't bother you, and also put bright fire in your window, that's what a jack-o'-lantern is all about, to repel the dark spirits. The final cut is 30 seconds in length with the out cue name comes from. Coming across in three, two, one. So the name Halloween means the evening before All Hallows Day or All Saints Day. And the Christian church said, okay, Celtic people, you're becoming Christian. You have this belief that there are all sorts of spirits out on this evening. Tell you what, we will make November the 1st a day for all saints when you can pray to or think about any saints you choose. And it's saying, these are Christian good spirits now uh, instead of all kinds of evil uh, pagan ones. Uh, and that's where the name comes from.
That wraps up today's story. Thanks for calling the Ball State News Hotline.